You'll need to click continue so that we can uh, record this and have this available to others beyond ourselves here today. Uh, my name is John Pentland. I am uh, the minister at Hillhurst United Church down in Kensington. And it's a privilege to be here with you today. There are three co-chairs of the Calgary Interfaith Council, of which I'm a third and helping to lead today. Uh, when you look at this screen today, uh, I hope you feel like I do, and that is I feel very uh, humbled to see the diversity of people and very proud of the City of Calgary to have our Interfaith Council and, and members and, and visitors here today to feel the solidarity uh, and the support and the need for one another in these difficult days during the COVID season. This is uh, National Indigenous, Indigenous Peoples Day. And this is in particularly important that we gather today as we uh, come together of people of interfaith communities to recognize the importance and the gift of the creator uh, and the creator's land, the land that we are all on, Treaty 7 land. Uh, in a moment, I'll invite Tony Snow to offer a land acknowledgement. I just quickly like to let you know that uh, our process today will involve uh, 19 different folks who will be given the task uh, of one minute to share a reflection from their particular religious community. Uh, they won't uh, be muted or disappear uh, if they exceed one minute, but we trust that we'll work toward that one minute goal. The opportunity is to be done this gathering in 45 minutes. It's very important that we pause uh, during these difficult days to uh, give thanks uh, to the creator, to remember the gift of the diversity of the religious communities, to mourn uh, the lives of the 215 uh, children who bring us here to this day, plus other challenges we face in our own city or the city of London as we remember the act of terrorism just two weeks ago. There are so many challenges we bring to this time of prayer today. And prayer is both uh, silent and spoken and prayers take on legs once they become embodied in us. And so I give thanks for the words and the silence that we'll share together. And so welcome to this gathering today as we bring together our diversity and unity uh, with the creator as we come. It's my privilege to invite Tony Snow uh, to introduce himself and then to offer a few words to us as we begin this day. So welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tony Snow. I come from the Stony Nakota First Nation, west of Calgary. Uh, I am a descendant of the signers of Treaty Number no. 7 and a uh, Indigenous minister for the Chinook Winds region of the United Church of Canada. My father was the uh, first Indigenous minister in uh, the United Church in Alberta. And so we carry on his legacy and his work through the work that we do today. Um, the Indigenous Day is a very important part of the, the work that he began in our community and the work that he began to bridge our Indigenous spirituality with those that came after and all those that are here today. So I'd like to welcome all of you to this space and I'll start with a brief smudge and, and offer a few words for our time together. We like this smudge as our elders do every day to remember the creator. The smoke from this smudge carries our prayers to the creator as we offer them now in reverence for our faithfulness through the lessons that we were given to our ancestors and remembrance of the importance of prayer in our lives. So let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the memories of our ancestors that brought about this day, the strong connection of our people here, and the strong connection that we have to our traditions and we know who we are in our space and in our time, that we can share that here today. It's a great opportunity for all of us to come together and be one people. 
We know that there are many struggles. We know that there are many challenges. We know that there are many acts of hatred, many acts of violence that have taken a lot of our people, including the children of the Kamloops Indian Residential School. So we pray for the families, the descendants, and all those affected by these tragedies, including those that are affected in our Muslim community who have suffered loss because of the same hatred that brought us here today to try to build a better world. So we will work in that way together. Om Chagezi Tuan Chagezi, Jesus Christ Machapur Chagezi. The Chagawaka, Wahogu Hari Chin, Narizi Narigi Chabi Chen, Nagahais Nagu Chatnea Ijia. Amen. Thank you. Uh, that is in our tradition. Uh, we are a community that practices both Christianity and the uh, faith that our people have um, been practicing for millennia. And so we take the time today to reflect on, on what that means. I'm just going to share this PowerPoint and do a brief couple of slides to orient us on this day. Today is the Indigenous Day of Prayer. And it's an important time to remember you know, the uh, the legacy that we have been given by our ancestors is particularly by our elders at the ecumenical conference. And so I would offer this land acknowledgement first. We acknowledge all perspectives here. If you come from other lands, welcome. You are part of our treaty story. If you come from here or were born here, we welcome you into this treaty relationship as well. You are the recipient of the legacy of your ancestors. As our guests, we welcome you to these lands given to us by the Creator. In these lands in 1877, we made a great peace between the people of the Nakoda Iethkyabi, the Nitsitapi, and the Tutina people, with the British Crown and the Church, who urged this peace that we might live together in blessing and harmony, sharing resources and wisdom. We recognize the Metis people who also became part of this story. Sadly, the promises made at treaty never came to pass. And today we live with the outcomes of those choices in discoveries like the mass grave uncovered at the Kamloops Indian Residential School and the discoveries yet to come. For those that come from other places, other histories, histories of slavery, histories of displacement, histories of refugee resettlement and persecution, we welcome you to this space of peace. To all our BIPOC relations, we welcome you. You're part of the story. Your presence here balances the presences of the settlers and brings a different history, a different way of knowing, different practice, and different faith traditions to our circle. We acknowledge your hardship in this country and the acts of terrorism and acts of violence you endure. We support your right to be here as part of our treaty story. All our destinies are tied into this one land. May we learn to live in peace and respect together. I just want to uh, highlight the time uh, that we are remembering that at the time of the Indian Ecumenical Conference in the 1970s, uh, there was a need to deal with the religious factionalism of uh, different groups that were Christian and others that were Indigenous and trying to come back to our sense of who we were. And so this empowerment through the learning and sharing uh, between peoples of different communities across Turtle Island came from all parts of North America and Central America to come and share and to come and learn from one another and to share with our clergy relatives different perspectives and different views on how we could revive the spiritual strength of the North American Indian. And so in this time, we took uh, a moment to share our ceremonies, perform our ceremonies, which had been outlawed, and then come to a better understanding of how we interact with the world and how we live up to the promises and the traditions that were left to us by our ancestors. In this day of prayer, uh, there was designated by the elders of that ecumenical conference in their first meeting in 1971. It says, we have designated June 21st as a day, Indian day of prayer. As you know, this day is when the sun is 
is in the sky the longest, and it is a holy day for a great many tribes, hoping to designate this one day as a religious, a symbol of religious unity, as a day that Indian Christian denominations, as well as non-Christians, could observe simultaneously, but each in their own way. Of course, if whites wanted to share in this day with us, we're only too happy to receive their brotherhood. This is a quote from um, one of the architects of the uh, Indian ecumenical movement and of the uh, ecumenical conference that we held in 1971 and until 1985. And uh, his name was um, I'm drawing a blank at the moment. Sorry about that. Uh, Robert um, Bob Thomas. In this tradition, um, we bring together several different activities. And so one of the things that we highlight is that there are different traditions among Indigenous tribes at this ecumenical conference, at this gathering of different spiritual leaders. They each brought their own way of worship. And so the blessing way, which is a Navajo way, the pipe ceremony, which is the Nakota Sioux and other uh, tribes of the plains and the sa sacred fire, all symbolize the tribal diversity representing the conference and illustrated the ecumenical possibilities of such a gathering. And there were other uh, practitioners who also took part. Uh, at one point, we had up to 10,000 people at the uh, Morley uh, Stony Indian Park. And so some of the uh, work that was done is that we we're bringing together different tribes and different faiths. And we've got the note, they noted that they had a lot of things in common. We know that we're all natives of this island here, said Bob Thomas. We know that God made us out of this soil. We know that there's a creator above. There are certain rules he gave us and certain relationships we're supposed to have in this land. The conference was now more than a meeting of religious people. It had become a meeting of religions. And that's from the book by James Treat called Around the Sacred Fire. In this uh, amalgamation of the uh, elders of that conference, they wanted to put forward a day of prayer, which was uh, upheld by the uh, steering committee of elders that are seen here in this photo. Uh, a lot of them were traditional spiritualists, uh, traditional practitioners of their community and, and pillars of their community to come together to try to uh, reinstate the belief systems of the Indigenous people from various places so that they could uh, have faith when they went back, that they would begin learning again, that they would begin practicing their traditions that had been uh, in some cases outlawed, but in, in a lot of cases forgotten. So the steering committee was recommending that June 21st be set aside as a holy day, as a day of prayer and fasting to all Indians everywhere. A day when we could think about our place in this universe that we're supposed to do and what we're supposed to do to carry on what our old people told us. The tribal community's partnership with this land and the whole spiritual part, world that's part of it. We know that's out of the kilter now, as Bob Thomas said. The transnational commemoration might help them get things back in balance the way it used to be. And so the call for this action was to amalgamate the youth and to help the youth to connect with their teaching in order to build leadership. And in that leadership, they carried that on into things like the uh, repatriation of the constitution in the development of the uh, uh, different uh, agencies that happened in the in the urban center. So the friendship centers were a very important part of that. And in uh, this national call for a day of prayer. And the national call for a day of prayer uh, finally was uh, accepted and, and put into place in 1996. So this is some of the history. 1982, the uh, newly formed Assembly of First Nations led by David Ahenikiu, who was a nephew of Andrew Ahenikiu, who was a uh, Anglican priest, uh, launched a campaign to get June 21st designated as the National Aboriginal Solidarity Day. And the first official response came in 1990 when the Quebec legislature acknowledged June 21st as a day to celebrate Native cultural traditions. Delegates to the 1995 Assembly, an ecumenical gathering of Native and non-Native religious leaders, organized by Ojibwe politician Elijah Harper, renewed the call for a national commemoration. 
1996, the Canadian government finally responded by proclaiming June 21st to be a National Aboriginal Day. This is the uh, result of a lot of the actions that we saw during the 1990s of OCA and of the uh, Royal Commission on Aboriginal People that sought to understand governance in these communities. And so there was a, a greater awareness and the apologies from the United Church became one of those trigger points uh, in 1998. The United Church apologized for the residential schools and that led to the uh, residential school action uh, that happened uh, for the uh, class action suit against the government that was resolved in 2008. And in 2009, we had the uh, National Aboriginal Day uh, apology and, and National Aboriginal Day became an Ab National Aboriginal Month. And so it's a long history that is tied to this. And what it says at the end here, I think is important. Few Canadians realize that this holiday began as a holy day conceived at the Indian Ecumenical Conference in Morley. Fewer still that the idea was first suggested by Browning Pipestem, an Otto Missouri lawyer from the US. So that is the origin of the day that we commemorate today. And we continue to follow up on that in the uh, Banff Indian Days and other uh, parts of the uh, work that we do with the Banff National Park, with the different park areas and with the Stony Tribe. We continue to lift up this important uh, memory around uh, Indigenous Day and, and the work that we do. So here today, we come for prayers of healing, and prayers for justice, prayers of reconciliation, and prayers for harmony. And we think about the importance of our time here and how we need to get along in the future for future generations because these are the place of peace and the indigenous people have always upheld that peace. It's an important part of the treaty relationship, an important part of our cultural tradition to maintain a peace and a welcoming and an opening for everyone to be here. So I thank you for this time to share the words and I'll turn it back to our next offering of prayer. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Tony did a presentation today at lunch. Uh, was it recorded, Tony? Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. And how would they find it? Find that if they were to? I think it is sent out to the participants, but uh, we may put it on the uh, Right Relations uh, Indigenous Month site at the Hillhurst website. Okay, thank you. It's really worth being part of. So we give thank you to Tony for a bit of the history of 50 years uh, and the call today for he prayers of healing and justice, reconciliation and harmony. As we begin our time of prayer uh, for 19 faith communities coming together, I'll invite uh, each person to state your name and your faith community and offer your words, uh, prayer or devotion as we gather now and I invite you first just to look at the screen and look at the beauty of the faces and the representation of the various communities who come to that together today with open hearts and minds and spirits asking for the creator to be with us as we hear the words and take them into action to be lived in compassionate justice and peace in our world. And so the first person I'm to call on uh, is Malik and I'll invite us each to introduce ourselves our faith community and offer our prayers as we begin our prayers now. Is Malik present? I can start. Okay, Tracy. My name is Reverend Tracy Burr Robertson. I'm the minister at St. Thomas United Church. We come with open hands, open hearts, and open minds, loving creator. We come with humility, proudly lifting up our Indigenous siblings in prayer and celebration, particularly with the many atrocities that have come to light. Help us see and accept that it is the Spirit's light that shines on every truth, including the truth of Canada's history of genocide. We want to look away. The light is too bright. But look, we must. Help us look at the light. Help us accept this truth because it is a truth that shall set us free. Grant us your resolve and your courage to support Indigenous neighbours and friends this day and every day, to struggle for what is just and right. Encourage us to listen more, 
speak less, share stories, and participate in the movements for change that will bring us together in good and respectful ways. All this we lift up to you, healing spirit. Amen. Good afternoon, my name is Cantor Russ Jane, and I am the Cantor and spiritual leader of Beth Sedek Congregation here in Calgary. I would like to offer up two very brief poems. The first written by Schmerke uh, Kazerginski, and the second written by Rabbi Ben Zion Bosker. Both of these poems were written in response to the Shoah, the Holocaust, but their themes are very appropriate to the severity of the moment at hand. Hush, be silent in the presence of these graves. Our enemies have done this. Laments offer no gain. The sea has a shore and prison its limits, but there is no end to our pain, no end to our pain. The earth has grown a fresh layer of green to conceal the bloodstains. The smoke from the craters has long vanished in the sky. The cries of anguish have grown silent. God has kept a covenant with us that life shall have rebirth. But piercing the silence, I hear God's lament for his children slain by their brother Cain and I hear the blood of the innocent crying out from earth and sky, remember us, remember us. Hello, my name is the Reverend Natasha Brubaker and I represent the Anglican Church here in Calgary. Oh God, in whom we live, and move and have our being. We mourn and we listen. A voice was heard in Rama, wailing and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children because they are no more. We remember the 215 children who died at the residential school in Kamloops and so many others who never came home. We remember the Muslim family mowed down in London, Ontario. This way of relating is not only in the past, it is our present. Again and again, we do not live out the truth that every single person is equally created in God's image. Again and again, we decide to do unto others as we would not have done unto ourselves. We humans still seek to be humane. The compassion, justice, and mercy of God incarnated in Jesus show us what our humanity can be. May we open our hearts to be transformed by the truth of this moment and find a new way forward in harmony, peace, and reconciliation. For only the truth will set us free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, I'm uh, Reverend Robert Kubenko <clears throat> with the Calvary Buddhist Temple. Today I'll be reading a poem titled The Eternal Now by the late Reverend Kenryu Tsuji. Eternal Now. In the beginningless, endless flow of time, each life is a mere ripple, existing only for an instantaneous moment and disappearing forever. But each life is a unique experience with beauty and truth, all of its own, with no identical counterpart in history and none absolutely the same in the future. Your life, my life is attuned to the rhythm of the cosmos and to the heartbeat of reality. Each life exists in the eternal now. Each idea that is thought, each word that is spoken, each action that is taken changes the whole pattern of the universe for the universe is interdependent. 
Think, speak, and act then, always in the eternal now, with compassion and understanding for your own enlightenment and for the enlightenment of all sentient beings. Namo Amitabhas. Hello, I'm Sister Anne Marie Walsh, representing the Sisters Faithful Companions of Jesus and the FCJ Christian Life Community. And we're delighted to be here joining in in this prayer vigil, where we unite with the interfaith community and many others in praying each day for our indigenous sisters and brothers and for all suffering people. May the God of truth, peace, justice, healing, and hope enable us all to be open to the blessings being offered to us at this time. And may we work together to share these blessings. May we always recognize the sanctity of life. May God enable each of us to do our part in moving toward a deep reconciliation and healing and a new depth of compassion and trust. Bringing God's love into our world in a very real way and continuing to widen that circle of love. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. My name is Asif Ahmed Arif. I am from the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace and blessings of God be upon you all. The founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat states, all the prophets faced difficulties and experienced great tribulation. None has been without it. That is why there are great rewards for the people who bear all ordeals and afflictions with patience. In the Holy Quran, God addresses the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, stating that he should give glad tidings to those who are patient and to those who, when faced with an ordeal, say that there was a time when we did not, exi when we did not exist. God created us and we are his trust and to him is the final return. There are glad tidings indeed for such people through their patience in the face of ordeals, they attain many blessings." End of quote. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat condemns all forms of cruelties and injustices in the strongest terms. Our heartfelt thoughts and prayers are with everyone who has been affected by the recent events. The harming of innocent people can never be justified under any circumstance. Thank you. Hello, my name is Wallace. I'm a pastor at All Saints Lutheran Church here in Calgary, and I'm here this evening representing the Synod of Alberta and the territories of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. We grieve with our Indigenous neighbors over the findings of the 215 children's unmarked graves in Kamloops. We grieve with our Muslim neighbors over the tragic loss of life experienced in London, Ontario. I'd like to now offer a brief prayer. Gracious God, our hearts cry out for justice, peace, and reconciliation. We pray for our Indigenous neighbors who have been deeply wounded by the systems we have created. We pray for all residential school survivors who carry with them the trauma and pain from their experience. We pray for the 215 children found in Kamloops, for the many other children whose graves are yet to be found, and for their families and friends. We pray for missing Indigenous girls, women, and their communities. We pray for Muslims and Jewish communities across our country who are impacted by hate crimes. Give us humility, wisdom, compassion, and loving hearts so that we are moved to listen, moved to repentance and forgiveness, moved to build bridges, moved to rid our society of all hatred. Amen.
Hi, my name is William Lowen, and I am the pastor of Trinity Mennonite Church, just south of Calgary, Alberta. Mennonites have been in this country for over 200 years. We came seeking a place of peace and religious freedom. And as a national body, we are now on a journey to help others receive what we for so long have taken for granted. And I offer the following prayer. Creator God, as a nation and as nations within a nation, we are in a season of walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Please, we ask that you would lead us all beside green pastures and, and peaceful waters so that we would not fear evil, but that we would walk in goodness and mercy all the days of our lives. May we mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who rejoice. May we turn ourselves towards peace, striving to build wholeness with all around us. Lord, grant strength to victims of injustice. And may we who have participated actively or passively in racial injustice. May we build, may we work to build bridges of reconciliation and hope. Empower us to do your work on this world, in this world. Receive us into your arms and into your kingdoms, as we trust that you have welcomed these innocent victims of hate. Lord, be with us and guide us. Amen. I am Mariana Louise Kovar, representing Calgary Unitarians. Calgary Unitarians and Unitarians across the country are deeply saddened by these past events and these more recent events, but we are not surprised. Through our truth, healing and reconciliation learnings, our work to dismantle racism and white privilege, and our explorations of the legacy of colonialism, we are aware of the injustices, past and continuing, that result from attitudes, actions, and institutions that benefit some and not others. We pray for justice and healing for those who have suffered and those who continue to suffer. We pray that those of us who benefit, knowingly or unknowingly, at the expense of others, be willing to honestly explore change and rebuild that which is needed to create a just and sustainable world where people of all heritages, colors and faiths are respected and their dignity and worth is affirmed and promoted equally. May it be so. Amen. Hello, my name is Father Adrian Martins. I'm uh, the Interreligious and Ecumenical Coordinator for the Catholic Diocese of Calgary. And the prayer that I wanted to share was created in 2011, a little bit before then, um, for, from our, uh, the work that was done by many denominations, but, but needs to be furthered for sure. Let us pray. Holy One, creator of all that is, seen and unseen, of story and of song, of heartbeat and of tears, of bodies, souls, voices, and all relations. You are the God of all truth and the way of all reconciliation. Uphold with your love and compassion all who open their lives in the sh sacred sharing of their stories. Breathe in us the grace to trust in your loving forgiveness. that We may face our histories with courage. Touch us through the holy gift of story that those who speak and those who listen may behold your redeeming presence. Guide us with holy wisdom to enter through the gates of remorse, that our feet may walk gently and firmly on the path of justice and healing. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rabbi Mark Glickman. I am the rabbi of Temple B'nai Tikva here in Calgary. And along with my friend and colleague, Cantor Russell Jane, I bring you from the entire Jewish community of Calgary, I bring to our, our indigenous uh, neighbors our heartfelt condolences in the wake of this dark and tragic discovery that was made so recently. And I bring blessings of friendship and solidarity to all 
uh, Calgarians uh, of all religious faiths and ethnic backgrounds and races. I bring you also tonight eight Hebrew words, eight words of blessing. And I bring them to you at a time when, as we've seen in recent events, whether it was in Kamloops or in London or here in Cal Calgary, far too often people see diversity as a threat, as something that is dangerous. In Judaism, we are taught, however, that when we see somebody who is different than we are, whether they have a physical deformity or certainly if they are of another race or faith tradition or ethnic background. We are supposed to say eight Hebrew words and it is with these eight words that I will close. The words are Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Mishane Habriot. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of the universe, who makes people different from one another. Indeed, the diversity of our community is not a threat. It is perhaps one of our greatest blessings of all. Shalom. I'm Beverly Nolten. I live in Calgary, I'm a Baha'i, and I'm originally from the Bipani Nation. Today, I'm gonna to say a unity prayer in my language. And this unity prayer is for all the world, for everybody. Ayu abstutuki, ayu abstutuki. Put tut niskitsapopinan. Ayu amokitapok to mokpinan. Amokitsits put to mokspinan. Dakitasapatu pinan kitsit to mokipinan. Spomosa abstutuki. Okitayaka kimayak, kitapok to moksi. Nanukits kikinan. But no ke kamo tsip yu kinan, ana kimachis is to kaksen, ki damia bios kitsipua, akitua kome tekia, ayo abstituki, kinokes for mokspina. President Steele, go ahead. Hi, I'm Colin Steele. I'm one of the uh, church leaders with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I feel very, very to be with you all here today as our, our hearts are with you related to the recent events. I wanted to thank Tony Snow for sharing the history and bringing understanding and clarity to all of us and uh, allow me to offer a humble prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful at this time to be gathered together in unity as our hearts are knit together in love and care for one another and are grateful for the strength of all those here and all those from the various communities that are experiencing challenges and struggles and loss. And we pray divine help to be with those that are suffering, that they can experience some level of peace and comfort that they will feel of our love for them, that we can stand as an example of care for one another and that we will have the courage to stand up and speak up and, and reach out to others, that we will use our influence and our place to inspire others 
to do better, to act better, and to reach out in love and care for one another to make things better in the coming day. Jesus Christ, amen. I'm Dr. Harjot Kaur Singh and I represent the Calgary Sikh community. The Sikh philosophy values truth, justice, and to stand in defense of the defenseless. And it's with very heavy hearts that we stand with all to mourn the tragedy, the loss of 215 innocent children, innocent souls, and for all those children who remain uncounted and unknown. We pray for the truth, justice, and real reconciliation for Canadian First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We pray for all those individuals across this great nation of Canada who have faced violence at the basis of, on the basis of race, religion, gender, or ethnicity. We pray for the future of Canada. In the words of Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj from the scripture, Manas ki jat sabe ek pechanvo. Guru Gobind Singh says, in the caste of humanity, all people are equal. And so we as Sikhs pray in the future of Canada, may all indigenous be granted respect and equality. And in the future of Canada, may every child, may every individual be respected, nurtured, and equal. May we all prosper together. Wai Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Wai Guru Ji Ki Fateh. My name is Mary Rosetta Coquet from the Presbyterian Church in Southern Alberta. God of mercy, place your hand of healing on all those who have been impacted directly or generationally by the cruel treatment at the Canadian Indigenous Residential Schools. God of compassion, comfort all who are subject to discrimination, exclusion, and pain. God of justice, forgive those of us who perpetuate sinful systems and guide us in true repentance. God of freedom, transform all of us through your redeem redeeming love. Thank you, Jesus for this time of unity. Amen. My name is Linda Dudar and I represent St. Stephen Proto-Martyr Ukrainian Catholic Church. And I offer the following prayer. As we gather today, to lift the souls of the little children that we recognize and so many others that perhaps we are not aware. We gather in support of justice, healing and sanctity of life. We pray for courage and hope as we work together in the days ahead. May our work together be in harmony and with deepening of our relationships with one another across all communities and faith traditions. May we grow in understanding of our differences, experience true forgiveness, and continue to celebrate our diversity. May every child in our care be nurtured with love and respect. We pray for every individual who comes into our presence as a gift, and may we greet them as a brother and sister, as we are one family on this earth. May we continue to learn from 
and about each other. May our bonds with one another be strengthened through this sorrow as we gather this evening. May we always cherish the gift of life and be grateful for the treasures that it offers. And may we take care of each other with our minds, our bodies, and our spirit. May this prayer during this time of trial and tribulations for so many grant perseverance and resilience offering strength and character to build hope and the promise of a better future in the days ahead. Amen. Howdy. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Sayyid Hadi Hassan. I'm representing the Husseini Association of Calgary. Our deepest sympathy and best prayers go for the indigenous community and the 215 children who lost their lives and many more who are still not discovered. We've been discussing this issue since it has emerged. And several times I brought this topic in my sermons on Fridays. We pray to Almighty Allah that he brings peace and solace to the grieving families and grieving community. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Quran, Ya yuhan nas, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu, inna akramakum inda Allah al-Qab. O mankind, we've created you from a male and a female, and we've put you in different tribes and nations so you can recognize one another, so you can improve and learn from one another. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to say, the whole creation is the family of God. And the best from among you in the eyes of God are those who serve the family of God more beauty. We pray to Allah Azza wa Jal, that he allows humanity to be able to understand these beautiful messages which have been shared by this group. And they are the same in all the religious teachings and the scriptures. And we pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that he broadens the understandings of his servants so they can consider one another brother and sister and live in utmost peace and harmony. Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't see Malik here. Is Malik here? Okay, I believe we are, are at the, the conclusion of the those who were asked to speak. And we wondered if we could close this time now, gathering in silence for one moment as we reflect on the words that have been spoken by our community thus far. Uh, I'll invite us to a moment of silence of which I will close that with a short prayer. So I invite you to a moment of silence.
Creator, we give thanks for this time together, for the beautiful diversity of who we are created this day, for the different languages, religions, customs, traditions, and ways in which we express our gratitude for the gift of life, for the promise of your presence in our sorrow and the deepest valleys we journey, trusting that you are present to us. Help us to look in the mirror. Help us to own our way, to turn and walk in a new way. Hand in hand with brothers and sisters, we do not know yet as we walk in wonder and gratitude for the gift of life. We offer prayers for those who have died and gone before us and those yet born. May we trust in your love and compassion for each and every one of us, that peace and justice and compassion be lived in our life. May we practice hospitality, that in doing so we entertain angels unaware. Receive our prayers of body, mind, and spirit, that we be healed to walk anew trusting in your love made known. In the words and silence of this day, we give thanks for the gift of life and the call to action. May you be with us, we pray. Amen. Friends, we give thanks for your participation. And again, look at the screen and see and know that you're not alone as you journey. That when things get heavy and you feel afraid or worried, you are Recall these faces and names to inspire and encourage your journey, that we speak up against hate and violence, and through our acts of justice and compassion, God's love takes on flesh in God's world. So we give thanks for each and every one this day. May blessings be upon us. And on this Indigenous day, we give thanks for all our brothers and sisters, those who have walked the earth before us, and those yet to come. May our lives be a testament to God's love, compassion, and justice. May it be so. Amen. Thank you, Dalton, and thank you all. Uh, the mystery and gift of this technology